Who is one of the most famous uh, Israelite men, I suppose, in our current generation? Not including Yahweh Shai, obviously, but um, men in the world. If you look at Michael Jackson, what oh, did yeah. he have? He, he, he said he had that, uh, what is he called it, vitiligo. Vitiligo, um, yeah, that's what he called it. That's what he called it, but really it's the curse of biblical leprosy. Now, you've got to use your head. <clears throat> For a point in time, Michael Jackson was the most famous Israelite man around the world. What did Yahweh do? Put the curse of leprosy on him to show you that leprosy can happen because some people would be like, oh, but nah, you know, how can, how can, how can you be black and, and turn white, so, so to speak? Some people might not have seen that, but guess what? Everybody around the world saw and knew of Michael Jackson, so therefore, when they saw the most high curse is asked with leprosy, we, we realized this can actually happen. But um, that's the mark that was set up on Cain. Now I'm going to jump to Genesis 27, because when Cain came back in the reincarnation, he came back as Esau. And we're going to read about the enmity and the feud between Esau. You sure you don't want me to read that for you? I didn't know if you got it. Yeah, yeah, I said, I said that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. What, I had 25, I had... Yeah. Okay, if you've got it, yeah. you read it, publish sure. Genesis, where, do you, where should I start? Genesis. From Rebecca conceiving. This is Genesis 25 and 21. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife. Pause there, Baba Kishar. So who was Isaac, for those of you who may be new? Isaac was the son of Abraham. And Isaac was the son of the promise because Abraham first had Ishmael, which was born of the bondwoman Hagar. But through his wife, Sarah, he, um, he brought forth um, Isaac. And for those of you who can understand and receive it, Isaac was Yahweh Shai in the reincarnation. So the promise was, was given unto Abraham and it was passed on to Isaac and it was going to fall unto Isaac's son. So read on, culture. For his wife, because she was barren and the Lord was entreated of him. Yep, meaning that she went to a prophet to, to ask why she was barren. To be barren means that you're not able to um, have children. Now, if I may just speak on this for a second, a lot of women in, in this day and age are barren. And they're going to Esau to have like uh, fertility treatments, what they call it IVF and all this kind of stuff. But in reality, it's all through Yahweh. Yep. It, the scriptures say, I can't remember where, but roughly paraphrasing, the scriptures say that Yahweh openeth the womb, yes. yep. closeth it. Yep. So if you're sleeping with your woman and she's not getting pregnant, a spiritual person would be like, hang on a minute, why is the Most High not allowing her to conceive? Let me go and inquire and find out. But this world that we're in right now, it's not righteous at all. Yeah. Esau's got all the answers. so they're right. They think Esau's got all the answers, so they're running to Esau to get all his treatment. Yeah, if I can just add to that, um, it, it happened, barrenness happened to um, Michelle. Um, David's, um, one of David's wives, that wasn't hospitable to him or mocked him when he she, came. She, she the one that was cursing him when he was dancing, right? Dancing, yeah, because he, he was enjoying himself, but she was, she was re resent, she resented that. Yeah. You know, so the story is that she was, um, she away. became barren, barren, the most I closed up a room, which is a curse, as you, as, you, as you were explaining. It's a curse. When a woman is barren, it's a curse yep. to not be able to bring forth children. That's right. That's a good point. Because in the ancient world, women knew their place. And if a woman can't perform her duty, which is to bring forth the seed of a man, that was a very um, shameful thing. Let me get a quick precept on that. Right. Jacob had um, Rachel and Leah, right? Yep. And... Jacob loved Rachel, but Leah conceived first. And it got to a point where, where Rachel was like, oh, she said to Jacob something along the lines of, give me children or something like that. And Jacob was like, well, it's not in my hands. Roughly paraphrasing. I don't need to go there because it will take us off point. But um, yeah, the most I open if and close if the womb. Right. Go ahead, come up. Come up, come up. This is um, Amabeki's wife conceived. Verse 22. So she, 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 she could see she was made pregnant. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it so be, if, if it be so, why, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord, the prophet. Yep. So they had two, well, let's read it. Okay. And the Lord said unto her, two nations are in thy womb. Two men of people shall be separated from thy bowels. So that's right, two nations are in thy womb, yeah, and, and they're, they're going to be separate one from the other. So those two children that were striving in her womb, you've got to imagine this stuff, man. So she must have been feeling all kinds of pain in her stomach, 
in her room from these two children fighting uh, in the room. So then she went to inquire of the Prophet, and the Prophet said, Two nations and two manner of people have got it, are in thy bowels. Keep going, Baba Kusha. Two nations are in thy womb, and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bowels. And one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. Right, pause there, Baba Kusha. So one, one nation is going to be stronger than the other, and the elder shall serve the younger. So meaning that the, 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 um, the firstborn is going to end up being a servant to the second. Now, um, the Most High usually deals with the underdog. In many cases, the Most High usually favours the younger. I'll give an example. Look at Moses and Aaron. Uh, Aaron was older than Moses by three years, I believe, but Moses was chosen to be the leader of the nation of Israel. Mm. You can look at King David. He had four brothers, four brothers, and David was like the young boy, the stripling, who nobody even really considered, but yet he was chosen and he was raised, raised up to be the king of Israel. Little shepherd, isn't it? Little now that's spiritual shepherd, because King David was Moses, as I said. but you know, again, mm. in many cases, the elder served the younger. Another case. When Jacob blessed uh, Ephraim and Manasseh, oh, yeah. Manasseh was the elder, but Jacob crossed his hands and put the blessing upon Ephraim. And Joseph was saying to him, look, no father, um, Manasseh is the elder. And Jacob was like, no, 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 it must be so because the, the, the younger um, shall bear the rule and the elder shall serve the younger. Is that, yeah, keep going, Baba Kishore. So well, where was we? We were on um, verse 20. Yeah, well, verse 23, just off that. Verse 24, when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb, and the first came out red all over, like a hairy garment. Pause there, Baba Kasha. So when you look at uh, an Edomite baby being born, we call them Edomites because that's who they are on the earth today, that's their nation. One of the two nations that came from the womb, which was to be the nation of Israel and the nation of Edom. E Edom was the progenitor of the Edomites. So when he came out, he had no, no melanin. He had that same mark that was put upon him when he was in his previous incarnation as Cain, the mark of leprosy. So when he came out, he looked red all over like a hairy garment. Keep reading, Baba Kasha. All over like a hairy garment, and they called his name Esau. Yep, and his name Esau, as we know in the Hebrew, is Isashua, which is to say, wasted away is he, because it must have been terrifying, because most everybody back then had melanin. Right, yep, And when yep. Esau came out looking red all over, uh, probably crying and everything. They were like, whoa, what's going on here, man? Wasted away is he. <laughs> Keep going. Verse 26, and after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's hill. Yep, and that was Jacob. And his name was called Jacob. Yep. And Isaac was three score years old, and she bared him, if, if you don't mind. Go ahead. You don't have it never mentioned Jacob as well. Yep. What complexion he was, because he was what? Dark skin. Well, we don't see dark skin, but yes, he had melanin. That's right, and that's a good point because the Bible is very concise. And as I said, there's nothing superfluous in the Bible. It's not going to put, and then Yahashai went to the toilet, and then Yahashai washed his hands, and then he went to bed. You know, those things, of course, the Lord did those things, but not everything is recorded in the scripture because it doesn't need to be. So that's right. the fact that they didn't comment on, on Jacob. And the fact that his name wasn't Esau 2, mm -hmm. you know, they could have called him Esau 1 and Esau 2 if they, if they were both wasted away. That wasn't the case. They called Jacob, Jacob. Keep going, Baba Kishan. Where was that? And his name is called Jacob and Isaac was three, three score years old. Right, three score is uh, three twenties. So that means he was 60 years old. Now I worked this out the other day. Um, Isaac was 40 when uh, Rebecca was started to entreat the Lord. So I think for 20 years she was barren, and after the 20 years she conceived. Because let me just check that to see if I'm right. I worked it out the other day. Yeah, this is Genesis 25 and 20, starting from 19. And these are the generations of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham begot Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebecca to wife. So Isaac married Rebecca when he was 40, Whoa. and for 20 years she couldn't conceive, yeah? So after the 20 years, she then conceived Jacob and Esau because it says Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. So for 20 years she was barren. Imagine that. Imagine that in this day and age. Like, you've got your wife and you're trying to have children. For 20 years you ain't doing it. A lot of people bug out over that, especially women. A woman in this day and age, she bug out. Of the, oh. And even um, Abraham's wife, Sarah, hmm. she was kind of like, well, 
I'm never going to have children now because I, you know, I'm up in age. So that's why when Yahawash I said, I will return unto you in a time of life, she laughed. Yeah? She laughed and he said, why did, why did this thou laugh? Is anything impossible with the Most High? Mm. And that is exactly what Isaac's name actually means, laughter. Right. Yeah. So, keep going. She was 99. Yeah, just to add on, because um, uh, she found favour. Yep. She found favour with the Most High at a late age. Yes. So the Most High blessed her with, with having children. A, a good point. And this is... Someone might wonder, oh, why are they talking about these things? Well, guess what? These are signs of faith. Right. These are, these yeah, are miracles yeah. that happen. Because what 99 woman year old in this time would you ever think could bear a child? Because we know that the women, they have their, um, they have their time in their fertile and then they hit their menopause and they can no longer produce, uh, bring forth children. Um, so that is a miracle in itself. And another good example is um, Prophet Samuel's mother, is it, is it Hannah? They used to mock her because she was barren. Oh yeah, that's And eventually the Lord allowed her to conceive. Another mm -hmm. one is John the Baptist's uh, mother and father. Elizabeth uh, and um, Zechariah. Yeah. And Zechariah, he was cursed with um, a muteness. He wasn't able to speak because he didn't believe yeah. the angel that's right, until that's right. John the Baptist was born. So there's many, there's many miracles and, and magical. Well, I used the word magical. <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, miracle. You said it right. <laughs> the world would call it magical and mystical and all this kind of stuff. But yeah. we have to believe in these things. These are the miracle. things which which help build up our faith. See, someone simple right. in the world be like, nah, that could never happen. I don't believe in that. Like for example, the flood. I've had people say to me, I don't believe in the Bible. I say, why not? Ah, oh, how, how could, the, how could the, the, the Lord flood the earth and put every animal on the ark? Well, guess what? We believe through faith. And it's our faith that strengthens us. Strengthens us. So when we hear these words, it boosts us up. Whereas someone in the world who has not faith, they hear this thing, it only adds to their um, incredulity. So uh, where was you? What was you reading? I, I've got something for you. Um, we, were on we were on Genesis, but I've got something for you quick. Go on, go ahead. This is Romans 15 and um, 4. For whatsoever things were written. A four time. A four time were written for our learning. So you, you're, yep, you're familiar right. with that. We were written for our learning. Yep. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. That's a good precept. And what do the scriptures also say? Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability of our times. So mm. we have this knowledge, we're not going to be shaken up. We understand that the, the Most High is out there, man. He's done things that w w would blow people's minds because they're just thinking on a carnal, mm. low vibration, one, di you know, one dimensional Dimensional kind of mindset. We're, we're flipping, we, we know that there's flipping 4D, 5D, 6D, 7D. The Most High is out there, man. So we're not going to lose our minds when we see more of these signs. You got something? Yeah, I've got a quick one. Uh, Matthew, right. tw Matthew 19. It's on the same point, uh, 24, it says, And again I say unto you, it is, imp it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter unto the kingdom of Yahweh. 25. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who can then be saved? 26. Last one. But Yahweh shall beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with Yahweh all things are possible. That's a good point and a beautiful precept. It's just the principle. It's, it's talking about the rich man, and we know it's true what he was saying with the rich man. Or, or, uh, it's easier for a camel to get through an eye of a needle than for a rich man to get through, uh, get into the kingdom of heaven. But the point is, uh, uh, he, he made that point very clear. But if it's the most size will, it's impossible. Yep. You know, most size can make a camel get through an uh, eye of a needle. He can, rich, he, he can make it happen. And yeah. that Rich is talking about not brothers that have enough money, wealth, big house. Yeah. It's also talking about status. Those that are high up in this world that don't want to let go of all that status they have. Yeah. Image. You know, status, rep. Yeah. Because you've got brothers that got money. <clears throat> you know, but they're still going to make it into the kingdom of heaven. So that's why the script says, with all that wisdom, you understand. Yeah. You understand. And, and to add to that, the most I can make you rich, as, as scriptures bring out, and he can make you poor. So if yeah. it's of the most size will, you can be rich one day, you can be poor, bam! And the next thing you know, you're, you're rich again. Yep. So that's the most side, that's, that's, that's possible to Yahweh Bashim Yep, and a prime example of what you just said there about making a rich man poor and making a poor man rich is all we have to do is look at the story of Job. Job was a wealthy man, he had lots of children. And then in a moment, in one day, all these calamities came upon him, mm -hmm. probably lost it all. But guess what? Job held fast to his faith and his integrity. And at the end, Bad. the Most High magnified him even greater. Yep. 
So what was he reading before? You still want um yeah. Esau, he came out all red. Yeah, so he finished that read on to when Esau became a cunning hunter and Jacob a man playing play man all intense Bob And well, um, verse 26, and after that his brother came out and his hand took hold on Esau's hill. Yep. And his name was called Jacob. And Isaac was three score years old when she bare him. Of course, Baba Kashar. And what was the significance of Jacob holding on to Esau's heel? That is a very symbolic thing and a very spiritual thing. So when Esau was coming out the room, Jacob was holding him fast and he would not let go. Now that represents Jacob pulling Esau out of his position of power. We're going to get that later in 2nd Ezra, but carry on Baba Kashar. And 1 verse 27, and the boys grew and Esau was a cunning hunter. A man of the field, and Jacob was a plain man, dwelling in tents. Yep, keep going. And Isaac loved Esau because he did eat of his venison. But Rebekah loved Jacob, and Jacob sought pottage. And Esau came from the field, and he was fain. And Esau said to Jacob, Feed me, I pray thee, with that same red pottage, for I am fain. Therefore was his name called Edom. Yep. And, and Jacob said, so me this day thy birthright. Pause there, Baba Kishan. What does Edom mean? Red. How do we prove that? Let me get it, Baba Kishan. Sorry, it's like it. Sorry, sorry. Genesis 36 verse 1 proves that. Genesis 36 and 1. Now these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom. And Edom means red. Now Genesis 36 and 1 confirms that Esau is Edom. So again, vocab Maloma is talking all this shit, saying, oh, the Edomites are done away with. You're wrong, man. Are you actually reading this book? It's telling you that these are the generations of Esau, who is Edom, and the whole chapter of Genesis 36 breaks down the uh, progeny, I believe that's the word, the progeny, yeah, yeah, yeah. of Esau, you know? Mm. And other people who try and say shit like, um, yeah. other people who try and talk shit and say, Oh, but um, no, nah, no, nah. there's no such thing as nations, there's no such thing as nations. Have you read the table of nations in Genesis 10? Why is that in there? There's a reason why certain, certain peoples are certain peoples, because the most side deals with nations. Our whole nation had to go into slavery because of what our people did. The most side didn't just say, oh, I'm just going to put the wicked of our people into slavery. No, the elect and the wicked both had to endure the slavery, which is why we're in our condition now. Likewise, when, <coughs> when it's Esau's time to receive his punishment, the Most High is going to punish the whole nation of Esau. He's going to punish the whole nation of Ishmael, the whole yep. nation of Moab, the whole nation of Ammon, and all these Hamites and everybody else. You're all, all, all of you are going to pay collectively because that's how the Most High deals. Keep going, Baba Kishore. One verse, where was that? Verse 28. And Isaac loved Esau because he did. Now we're done with that. Verse 29, and Jacob saw pottage and Esau came from the field and he was faint. And Esau said to Jacob, feed me, I pray thee, with the same red pottage, for I am faint. Therefore was his name called Edom. Yep. And Jacob said, sell me this day thy birthright. And Esau said, behold, I am at the point to die. And what profit shall this birthright do to me? And Jacob said, swear to me this day. And he swore unto him. And he sold his birthright unto Jacob. When Jacob gave Esau bread and pottage of lentils, and he did eat and drink and rose up and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. So Esau sold his birthright for some flipping red pottage. And if I'm not mistaken, isn't that like meat with the blood still in it? Yep, that's right. And soup. That's, it's like a soup. Meat mixed, mixed with soup. Yeah. Now that's another sign who you can identify who the Edomites are in the nation to on this. Mm. Who, who the Edomites are as a nation on the earth to this day because what do they tend to do? Mm. They tend to like to eat their meat uncooked mm. or raw. Like that's where they get them rare steaks and all that kind of shit. Yeah. Now I went past um, one steakhouse on the way here. I didn't go in, I was just walking past it. But that's where a lot of them Edomites like to hang out and eat and they'll eat their, their rare, medium rare and all this kind of shit steak. And um, I've even seen documentaries on YouTube about e Edomites who go to the supermarket and they'll literally just buy meat, take it at home yeah. and eat it raw. Yeah, yeah, there's and videos. It's, it's absolutely stomach, stomach turning to watch that stuff. But that is their nature. That's how they are, man. So um, we're going to go now to um, 
had more, I had more, I had more. If I had something else in Romans to link up with what you were yeah, saying. Yeah, if you got it, bring it out, Bob. Sure. Okay, this is Romans. We're staying on Jacob and Esau. Yeah, yeah, this is the same topic. This is Romans 9 and 10. Not only this, but when Rebecca also had conceived by one, even by our father Isaac, for the children being not yet born, neither, neither having done any evil, good or evil, but the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth, it was said unto her, The elder shall serve the younger. Yep. As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. Yep. What shall we say then? Is the unrighteousness with the Most High? Most High forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion mm. on whom I have compassion. Yep. So what that basically means is Esau was predestined to be the wicked from, from the beginning. That was his uh, whole role. Because everything it has a purpose, you know. The scriptures say, um, look at the, examine the works of the Most High and see that they're, they're done in balance. They're, two, two, they're, they're done in a balance. You have hot, you have cold, it's a balance. Fast, slow, it's a balance. Up, down, it's a balance. Good, evil, it's a balance. The righteous and the wicked, it's a balance. So that's how the Most High deals and basically the way that the most high is going to balance the equation is to take the wicked the wicked out of the earth that's right yep so what we're seeing is that the, 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 the fulfillment of um, this whole controversy that started back in Genesis between Cain and Abel it's been brought brought back now in, in the time of J Jacob and Esau and we're going to re read more into this so let's go into um, the, 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 the blessing of Isaac on Jacob which is in 27, Brother Kishore, sure. Genesis 27. Okay, this is Genesis. From the point where he, he gets the goat skins and goes to his father. All right, yeah, this is Genesis 27. And it came to pass that when Isaac was old and his eyes were dim mm -hmm. so that he could not see, he called Esau his eldest son and said unto him, my son. And he said unto him, behold, here I am, here am I. And he said, behold now, I am old, I know not the day of my death, now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field, and take me some venison, and make me savoury meat, mm -hmm. such, as, such as I love, and bring it to me, that I may eat, that my soul may bless thee before I die. And Rebekah heard when Isaac spake to Esau his son, and Esau went to the field to hunt for venison and to bring it. And Rebekah spake unto Jacob her son, saying, Behold, I heard thy father speak unto Esau, thy brother, saying, Bring me venison and make my savoury meat, make me savoury meat, that I may eat and bless thee before the Lord Jehoshaphat, before my death. That's right. Now therefore, my son, obey my voice. According to that which I command thee, go now to the flock and fetch me from thence two kids of goats, and I will make them savoury meat for thy father, such as he loveth. And thou shalt bring it to thy father, that he may eat, and that he may bless thee before his death. And Jacob said to Rebekah his mother, Behold, Esau, my brother is a heavy man, and I am a smooth man. Pause there, Baba Kasha. And that's a good point because a lot of us, Jake, for the most part, were kind of smooth. Um, but the Edomites, they're usually quite hairy, like hairy chest, hairy arms, things like that. Carry on, Bubba Kishore. My father, preadventure, will fool me and I shall be, and I shall, and will fool me and I shall seem to him as a deceiver. And I shall bring a curse upon him and not a blessing. And his mother said unto him, upon me. Be thy curse, my son. Only obey my voice. Yep, so Rebecca did a righteous thing there. She, she perceived that uh, Esau was wicked because Esau wasn't, Esau wasn't following the Lord's statutes and commandments. I believe that he was instructed not to marry the, is it the daughters of the Hamites. Yeah, that's correct. Canaanites, yep. yep. And, and Esau and done that. Esau went and done it. And that's one of the reasons why Rebecca was frustrated with him because she knew he was, um, 
he was not a godly man, whereas Jacob was. But it's kind of spiritual because it says that Isaac's eyes were dim. He was, you know, losing his sight, which is kind of spiritual in the sense that Isaac couldn't perceive that Esau was the wicked at that point in time. Isaac didn't really know. Right. So that's why he was going to bless Esau. But for what, thankfully through Yahab Hashem Yahashai, Jacob got the blessing. Keep reading, Mother Kasha. And he went and fetched and brought them to his mother. And his mother made savoury meat, such as his father loved. And Rebekah took goodly raiment of her eldest son Esau, which were with her in the house, and put them upon Jacob. Young, let me slow down. Yeah, take your time. And put them upon Jacob, her younger son. And she put the skins of the kids of the goats upon his hands and upon the smooth of his neck. And she gave the savoury meat and bread and she had prepared into the hand of her son Jacob and he came at his father and said my father he said how am I who art thou my son and Jacob said unto his father I am Esau thy firstborn mm -hmm. I have done according as he obeyed me arise I pray thee sit and eat of my venison that thy soul may bless me and Isaac said unto his son how is it that thou hast found it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord you have a shy that power brought it to me. Pause there, Baba Kashar. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah. He was using um so lucky, like he was using sub subtility, he was using discretion. Yep. He's being wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Yep, that's right. And there's another good point in that. I mentioned earlier that I knew some guys in the knew a particular guy in the world who couldn't get rid of his truth because he couldn't accept that Noah had the animals on the ark. Read that last verse again, Baba Kasha. And, um, and, and, and Isaac said unto his son, How is it that thou hast done it so quickly, my son? And he said, Because the Lord, Jehovah Shire, that power brought it to me. There you go. So when Noah was dealing with the animals, he didn't have to go around the world like flipping David Attenborough trying to catch this animal here, catch that animal there. Yahweh brought the animals to him. So that answers your question. If you, if, the thing is, the guy would still be a scoffer anyway because he's a scoffer. But yeah. the point is, is that if you have understanding, nothing's impossible with the Most High. He can say to the animal, "Look, get up, go over to that man, mm -hmm. go in the yard." Simple as that. Because nothing can disobey the will of the Most High, be That's it for right. good or be it for evil. Carry on, Baba Kasha. <clears throat> and Jacob went near unto Isaac his father, and he felt him and said, "The voice is Jacob's voice, but the hands are the hands of Esau." And he discerned him not, because his hands were hairy, as his, as his brother's Esau's hands. So he blessed him. And he said, Art thou my very son, Esau? And he said, I am. And he said, Bring it near to me, and I will eat of my son's venison. Pause there, Baba Kashan. Like you said, <coughs> Jacob was supplanted. And what, what does Jacob's name mean? Supplanter. So he was living, in, he was living up to his, what do you call it, nomen Rain, omen. Yep. <laughs> yep. So all of this is very spiritual, man. It's like, um, it, it shows that the Most High already knew how this was going to play out from the beginning. And we're just seeing it play out in the scriptures now. Carry on, Baba Kasha. But my soul made blessing and he brought it near to him. And he did eat and he brought it. And he brought him wine and he drank. And his father Isaac said unto him, Come there now and kiss me, my son. And he came there and kissed him. And he smelled the smell of his raiment. And he blessed him and said, See, the smell of my son is as the smell of the field, which the Lord Jehovah have blessed. Wherefore the Most High give thee the dew of heaven and the fatness of the earth and plenty of corn and wine. Let people serve thee and nations bow down to thee. Pause there, Baba Kashar. And what does it mean to be blessed? To have nations serving you and other nations bowing down to you. That's, that's to be blessed. And that was the blessing that we got from our forefather Isaac, which Esau despised and sold, sold for a morsel of meat. Carry on, I'm sure. Where else was that? Um, yeah, let people serve thee, and nations bow down to thee. Be Lord over thy brethren, and let thy mother's sons bow down to thee. Pause there again, Baba Kasha. And that's another thing. I've talked to our, some of our people and told them, look, you know what, we're going to have slaves in the kingdom. And they turn around and say to me, oh, but I don't want slaves. Or, no, that's wrong. We you shouldn't have slaves. It's lucky. That pisses me off. Yeah. When our own people say that, that pisses me off. Yeah. Yeah. That shows you they don't have a, um, a kingdom mentality. Yeah, rulership they mentality. Don't, they don't want 
better for themselves. Yeah. They're comfortable here. They're comfortable in being oppressed. They're comfortable in being called black. At being at the bottom. And being yeah. at the bottom. But you know what it is? Mm -hmm. You're, you're right in what you say. It pissed me off too. Yeah, but then yeah. I had to sit down and really think about it. And what it is, it's, it's a couple of factors at play here. First of all, our people have been so beaten down mm -hmm. and downtrodden mm -hmm. and oppressed mm -hmm. that many of our people, they like we said, they're not visionaries. Right. They can't envision a, a, a better way, a better place. All it, They think, I was born at the bottom, I'm going to die at the bottom, that's just life. Oh, yeah. So they, they're just comfortable in, in that low state. Yeah. And they don't have the vision to see that, look, you know what, man, the Most High's got something greater for us. Yeah. So there's that aspect of it. And the second aspect Come. is that it's actually a righteous thing in a weird way. Because they know what we went through in the transatlantic slave trade and they think, well, I wouldn't want to do that to my worst enemy. Yeah. But at the same time, you have to understand that the Most High deals with balance. What does he say? Um, I thought, uh, there's, there's one. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, nail for nail, nail, for nail stripe for stripe. That's how the Most High deals. So basically, they've done it to us. It's a righteous thing for the Most High to recompense tribulation mm. to them that trouble thee. So this is the thing. Like, you're right, you've got to come out of that um, mm -hmm, passive mm -hmm. mindset. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm the victim, I'm always mm -hmm. going to be the victim. I'm never going to be able to get, get my justice. That's the thing, because our people don't see justice in this world. They see our people getting shot down by the cops. The cops walking off scot-free. It's just accepted now. Nobody bothers to think, oh, well, that's wrong, because people are so used to it being wrong, they think it's right. You see what I'm saying? People are so used to things being upside down, right. that they can't perceive it ever being right side up. So, but that, if I may say, that's what Esau does. His whole thing is to, when you get to a certain age, you give up. So yes, Jake is yes. so worn out. Yes. They can't even fight no more because you can't. Again, I have a bit of sympathy, a bit, because when you get to a certain age, oh it's like boy. they break you down. Where yeah, 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 you yeah. ain't got no fight anymore. Where well, you're 50, you're 60 years old, and you're nearly on your deathbed. So you know you've tried everything you can. You've tried the Black Panthers. We've done that. Exactly. We we done the Marcus Garvey thing. It didn't work, so it's like we did the Martin Luther King thing. You got to get along. Red, their yeah. whole thing is we, if we can't beat them, join them. Yeah, and that's the wrong mentality to have. That is right. And again, it shows that our people perish for lack of knowledge. See, if they knew these scriptures, they would know that the Most High is going to deliver us through your heart shot. But they don't know that. They don't. They, they can't perceive that there's ever going to be anything better. So when you're trying to tell them now, mm. look, man, we got a kingdom coming. To them, it's like. It's like, they, they just can't comprehend it. Beyond, beyond this world. Yeah, it's out of this, it is out of this world. Carry mm, on, Bubba. That's right. Um, where was that? What, you, I was on Gen Genesis, um... Hang on a minute. I've got one more thing to say. Like, was it last year or the year before? When that Amber Geiger woman shot that guy, that Jacob in oh, his house. Yes. Oh, and yeah. At the end of the court trial, yeah. you had the judge, the flipping judge, big ass so-called black, black woman, all this stroking Matt her Manny's head. Issues trying to comfort her and you had the guy's brother yeah the brother of the guy who's murdering saying I, I don't want anything bad for you i want to love you can i hug her please please can i give her a hug is that what oh my uh, god it was just it was sickening to watch man mm. sickening to watch i felt like flipping um yes 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 you know putting your foot through the um i wasn't watching on t well, on on the youtube it? <laughs> watching the tv screen you feel like kicking the tv or something man because our people are so, <laughs> Our people think that, oh, you know what, I have to love my enemies because they misinterpret the scripture. You know, it says, if that, it, yeah, love thine enemies, you love yourself. When they smite, you turn, you have a what? cheek. If yeah. I may, if I may, but what enemies is that talking about? Exactly, they have no Th understanding. That's the enemies within the body. There you go. The enemies that are in the body of Mashiach. Dealing with the brotherhood. Not someone that's outside. Think the people that are outside, they are enemies. Anyone is not in this truth. That's not in the spirit of Yahweh Shai. They're your enemies, including your family. That's right. What did you have?